Blessed are they who hold the word fast in an honest and good heart and bring forth fruits with patience. Please stand for our processional hymn, Here I Am to Worship. Good morning. Good morning. Good to be back here again with everybody. I had a wonderful, I, I came here on Thursday, so we start off with a good time with the uh, women's group. So with Maureen, Maureen, Val, and Kathy and I, we got to know one another, and, was, and that group is, of course, open to everybody, and I want to thank the women for moving their time to Thursdays. And, um, and I'm learning lots on the Walls Farm. <laughs> I got to see their chickens the other night, <laughs> and I'm earning my keep weeding their garden. And I have, and I have to say, they not they are not making me do it. Yeah. <laughs> I offered, um, and it's my thanks for their hospitality. They've been very gracious to me, and uh, I want to thank whoever brought the pothos to, and put it on the the table in the uh, in the study because that's kind of be my little office there. It's just. I came in and I thought my heart leapt for joy because I love plants. So I want to acknowledge the, the people who have worked hard to, to lead us into worship today. Uh, Russ is our uh, lay reader. Uh, Gloria, thanks Gloria for preparing the altar for us. Uh, our sites person is Pat. 
Uh, Kirsten uh, will be uh, reading God's word today. Uh, Marilyn is our Zoom uh, sites people, a sites person, so I just want to say welcome uh, the people on Zoom. Uh, Martin is, is running the Zoom and Travis is running the sound. And our, our music uh, and vocalists are the music collective and aren't they wonderful? They're just amazing voices and amazing musicians. And thanks Amy for, oh no, Erica. <laughs> for being our organist. So let's pray. Heavenly gracious God, we give you thanks for gathering us together, for being present to us as we gather to worship you and to praise your holy name. We pray your Holy Spirit be with us, opening our, our hearts to your word, opening our hearts to um, your word proclaimed and read. Pray that your spirit guide us into true worship. In Christ's name I pray, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty God, you, you all hearts, hearts are open, open all desires known, known and, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Gloria hymn, Boldly I Approach.
Almighty God, your Son has opened for us a new and living way into your presence. Give us pure hearts and constant wills to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of the word. Let us attend. reading is taken from Amos chapter 8 verses 1 to 12. This is what the Lord God showed me, a basket of summer fruit. He said, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a basket of summer fruit. Then the Lord said to me, the end has come upon my people Israel. I will spare them no longer. The songs of the temple shall become wailings on that day, says the Lord God. The dead bodies shall be many, cast out in every place, be silent. Hear this, you who trample on the needy and bring to ruin the poor of the land, saying, when will the new moon be over so that we may sell grain and the Sabbath so that we may offer wheat for sale? We will make the ephah smaller and the shekel heavier and practice deceit with false balances buying the poor for silver and the needy for a pair of sandals and selling the sweepings of the wheat. The Lord has sworn by the pride of Jacob, surely I will never forget any of their deeds. Shall not the land tremble on this account and everyone mourn who lives in it and all of it rise like the Nile and be tossed about and sink again like the Nile of Egypt. On that day, says the Lord, I will make the sun go down at noon and darken the earth in broad daylight. I will turn your feasts into mourning and all your songs into lamentation. I will bring sackcloth on the loins and baldness on every head. I will make it like the morning for an only sun and the end of it like a bitter day. The time is surely coming, says the Lord God, when I will send a famine on the land not a famine of bread or a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. They shall wander from sea to sea and from north to east. They shall run to and fro, seeking the word of the Lord, but they shall not find it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today we're going to be singing a song um, that, go, that is a paraphrase of Psalm 9. And the part, the chorus, we'd re really love to invite you to sing along with us. The lyrics for the chorus are, the needy will not be forsaken, and the hope of the poor will not die, for God, who is mighty in judgment, does not forget their cry. So when you see those part, that, that part especially...
The second reading is from Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 to 28. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him, all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. And you who were once estranged and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled in his fleshly body through death, so as to present you holy and blameless and irreproachable before him, provided that you continue securely established and steadfast in the faith, without shifting from the hope promised by the gospel you have heard, which has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven. I, Paul, became a minister of this gospel. I am now rejoicing in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am completing what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, that is, the church. I became its minister according to God's commission that was given to me for you, to make the word of God fully known, the mystery that has been hidden throughout the ages and generations, but has now been revealed to his saints. To them, God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. It is he whom we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone in all wisdom, so that we may present everyone mature in Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for our gospel acclamation.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ is written in the 10th chapter of the Gospel of Luke, beginning at the 38th verse. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now as they went on their way, Jesus entered a certain village, where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks, so she came and asked him, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is only need of one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken from her. This is the Gospel of Christ. I invite the children to come up, please. <laughs> Hello, everyone. So I have a, good morning, good to see everybody. I have a paper ball here. So I'm just gonna throw it in there and catch it. That's pretty easy, right? Would somebody like to try? I'm going to roll it to you. I'm going to throw it up in there and catch. Good. And roll it back to me. Okay, now I've got two here. And now I'm going to try to do two. I don't know if it's going to work. I, won't, I'm not, I probably won't throw it very high. Oh, that was kind of hard. Anybody want to try this? Okay. Here. Try two. Oh, 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 oh. I didn't throw it very high. Okay, now there's three. Let's see what will happen if I do three. Whoa! Oh. Went all over there. Who wants to try three? Okay. Here, let's see. I'll get, I'll grab the other one. Oh, yeah, it's pretty hard, isn't it? It's hard. Now, if I can't do three balls, what if I had five or 15 or 20 balls? No. I'm just thinking I would, that would make me nervous if I had so many balls to juggle. So, you know what the story is about today? Why we're throwing balls up in the air and trying to catch them? Because as we get older, there's going to be more responsibility for us to do. There's going to be more things for us to do. So, how did it feel not to be able to catch it? Not good. So when we have these balls juggling in the air and we're trying to catch all these balls, we're going to drop some and it's going to make us feel bad. And then we get worried with all these balls up in the air. Yeah, I know you can. You know what? Why don't we wait till after service? then you can have all the balls, we'll see. So, the story that we wanna talk about is Mary and Martha, right? Oop. Mary and Martha. See, Martha was making dinner for Jesus, and she had lots of things to do, lots of things to juggle. Mary was sitting at Jesus' feet, just like you are, sitting by Jesus, listening to him teach, and she was very quiet. And Martha was saying, come Mary, come and, Tell, was he, actually, she was talking to Jesus and says, Jesus, tell Mary to come and help. And Jesus says, no, leave Mary alone. She's doing the better thing. So what we have here is a story of... What we have here is a story of what happens when we have too much to do. And if we um, have Jesus guiding us and showing us and Jesus in our hearts, then the love that Jesus has will show us and guide us of what things to do and what things to let go of. 
That's the story. So if you, whatever you love to do, that's what you should do. Whatever uh, you, whoever you love, you help them. And that's what Jesus is trying to tell us, not to get too anxious. So if I threw this up again and only caught one, I will be okay because Jesus is in my heart. Jesus loves me, and I love Jesus. And when we are right with Jesus, then we have nothing to worry about and not get distracted by so much that we... <laughs> you want these balls? Maybe I shouldn't give them the balls. You, you know what? You keep them, okay? Keep them until the service is over. Okay, you guys can go back to your seats. One day, a Sunday school teacher is teaching the story of Mary and Martha. The teacher explains Jesus' impending visit, and so Martha is hurrying to clean the house, and the teacher asks the children, what would you do if, if Jesus was going to visit your house today? One little girl quickly puts up her hand and says, I'd put the Bible on the coffee table. <laughs> How do we get ready to meet Jesus? So Martha and Mary have two different answers. So what we usually conclude from the story is that it's better to spend time with God than to be busy doing things. That's how we usually interpret Mary and Martha. But, you know, what does that say to the Marthas of this world? Okay, that's not much good news to the Marthas. But as with most sacred and holy things, the story isn't an either-or story. It's a both-and story. The story isn't about either Mary or Mar Martha, it's, it's about both the women. Both are disciples of Jesus, both love Jesus, and Jesus loves both of them. So why the admonishment? Well, out of love, Jesus wants Mary to under Martha to understand two things. The first is that Martha is responsible for her own actions and her own feelings, and that Martha should not drag Mary into Martha's anxious world. Martha's stress has nothing to do with Mary. What it has to do with is Martha herself. So Martha's emotions got the better of her. And Jesus is admonishing her for that. Why? Because Martha's emotions is going to affect everyone there. And possibly not in a good way because Martha was anxious. So here's what we know about anxiety or other human emotions. Human emotions are very contagious. Now, sometimes that's a good thing. Suppose a building is burning and someone is yelling, fire, fire. Well, fear spreads and people run for safety and lives are saved. So contagious nature of emotions in that case is a good thing. On the other hand, some other emotions aren't so helpful if they're contagious. Like if someone gets angry in a restaurant because they get, didn't get their meal correctly. So they're unhappy, they're yelling, the server is crying, the bystanders are watching and they're getting anxious. And you know, we human beings do not like to be anxious. So oftentimes we alleviate, alleviate that, that anxiety by just, you know, by distractions. And so if a bystander is, is anxious, they all just want to intervene. So, of course, the person intervenes and things escalate and, you know, somebody gets punched or even worse. So we human beings have these little satellites on the top of our heads. And we're picking up emotional signals all the time from other people in an unconscious way. And we're sending these emotional signals to other people in an unconscious way. And if we're not careful, pretty soon we're reacting out of our emotions in an unconscious way, and rather at reacting out of our right mind, our right heart, or our right spirit. 
So our anxiety causes others to be anxious. And it's very contagious. It's, if not contained, we'll end up with anxious marriages, anxious families, anxious churches, anxious societies, and an anxious world. That's how our world is now, anxious. We live in an age of anxiety. So thanks to, our, thanks to social media, our emotional reactions are spreading like COVID pretty fast. And the more emotional we get, the more out of control we feel. And the more out of control we feel, the more we want to control. So, and the less we're able to hear that still small voice in us that says, be still and know that I am God. Jesus knows that Martha's emotions are out of control, but he is also very encouraging towards her. Jesus is a, what I would say, a both and kind of God. He believes Martha can be like Mary and make supper at the same time. Jesus is saying to Martha, just do your thing, Martha. You can work and rest at the same time. Know my love is with you as you make supper for me and the rest of the disciples. So that's the point of the story, right? Is that, that nothing's wrong with Martha except she got distracted and became emotionally uh, overwhelmed. And that's probably true for most of us. And Jesus, being full of grace and truth, is saying, be present. Just focus. Just stay on the task and not worry about anything else. And the truth that Jesus wants to uh, share with us today is the truth found in a little book called Practice, The Practice of the Presence of God. It's a compilation of writings by a, a friar named Brother Lawrence, a 17th century friar. And his whole, and his whole life's intent is to practice the presence of God in daily life. Whether he's washing dishes, doing the laundry, gardening, or whatever, he cultivates an awareness of God. And we sometimes think that uh, that's either undoable or it's not worthy. Like practicing the presence of God while I'm doing dishes? Like, does God really care about me doing dishes? No, God cares about you doing the dishes not whether you're doing the dishes. So this is a summary of what, what Brother Lawrence, how he approached life, that he had always been governed by love without selfish views, and that having resolved to make the love of God the end of all his actions, he had found reasons to be well satisfied with his method. That he was pleased when he could take up a straw from the ground for the love of God, seeking him only and nothing else, not even his gifts. And that in order to form a habit of conversing with God continually and referring all we do to him, we must at first apply to him with some diligence. But that after a little care, we should find his love inwardly excite us to it without any difficulty. Lawrence pleads that all work is valuable to God and one needs not accomplish great things to please him. The laborer is, val as, is as valuable to God as the priest. I think this is what Jesus is saying to Martha. I love you, Martha. You're valuable to God. Your work in making supper pleases God. You don't have to compare yourself to Mary, and you don't have to blame her. Know God's love for you as you work. Life isn't an either-or proposition. We human beings have a tendency to think either-or. The meal she's making for Jesus doesn't have to be either good or either bad. It can just be a meal made with love for God. The more Martha practices the presence of God, the more she will come to know God's love. And like Brother Lawrence says, God's love is perfect and is able to cast out all fears and worries and anxieties. 
when we know God's love in our hearts every moment of every day, there is nothing to be anxious about. She can rest in her labors and she can, be, she can learn to be a both and kind of woman. So can we ranch and farm and do our jobs in the world from a place of rest in our hearts? Can we shop, raise children, wash windows while sitting at Jesus' feet? Can major life decisions come out of an inner stillness of God's presence? I say yes with God's help. But I know some are thinking easier said than done. With God, all things are possible. And the secret, I think, to cultivating Mary, a Mary heart and a Martha body and a Martha world, the secret is found in Brother Lawrence's book title, The Practice of the Presence of God. The key word is practice. Our faith is about practice. It's not about doing or believing. It's about practicing. Learning the quiet rhythms of God in a hectic world requires just that, practice. We usually don't think of life as a practice, but it sure is. Practicing is about learning, and learning implies being a student. And isn't that what a disciple is, a student? A student needs to practice in order to learn. So what they also need, what students also need to practice are tools. And one tool I suggest when it comes to our emotional health is called the change triangle. Now, if you Google change triangle, you'll come across a website that is, I think, enlightening to how we can attain emotional health. So I suggest you try that. Google change triangle and practice what it preaches on there. And with God's help, see if your emotional health will get better. And if your emotional health gets better, so will your spiritual health. So instead of being overrun by anxiety, we can be, learn to be like Christ, calm, Curious, connected, compassionate, confident, courageous, and clear. And maybe when the church becomes like Christ in these things, we can help our world heal from all the anxiety that they're experiencing, slowly eating away at people's hearts and souls. So in the end, I say this. We don't have to live in a monastery to get its benefits. We can live a quiet, restful life in our hearts in a stress-filled world. It requires us to be patient with ourselves and with others and to care for ourselves, to care for our souls as Jesus cares for us. And we can learn to rest in our labors, not just from it. Colossians 3.23 says, Work willingly at whatever you do, as though you were working for the Lord rather than for people. And the Lord's work is never burdensome because he works alongside with us. And Jesus can't expect more or less from us than to allow him to work alongside with us. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we love you and thank you for giving us gifts to bless you and others. Remind us we are wonderfully and uniquely made. Help us to be the kind of church that does things for you only and not for any other reason. Because when we only focus on your love, we can find rest in our labor for you are carrying the burden with us. And we thank you for that, O oh, oh Lord, that we are yoked with you in such that you walk alongside with us and carry our burden with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please stand as we 
confess the faith of our baptism. I believe in God. by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy, Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please stand, sit, or kneel as you are able for the prayers of the people. I was going to add this morning, Nancy, that perhaps as well as standing or sitting or kneeling, this morning it might be appropriate just to come to Jesus' feet and sit before him and offer him our prayers in all humility. During this morning's intercessions, there will be brief moments where I will leave a pause of silence, and I ask that you add your own prayers that you find most appropriate and what is found in your heart. So let us pray. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for this gathering, for our bishop, Helen Kennedy, and for all ministers and people. This morning we pray for God's church in the world. Almighty and everlasting God, by your spirit, the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified. Receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in our vocation and ministry, we may truly and devoutly serve you. Through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among all nations, and for the well-being of all people. This morning especially, we pray for and remember the people of Sri Lanka and the people of Ukraine. Almighty God, kindle, we pray, in every heart the true love of peace, and guide with your wisdom those who take counsel for the nations of the earth, that justice and peace may increase until the earth is filled with the knowledge of your love, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. This morning we pray for those in any need or trouble. We pray especially for those who have asked for our prayers, whether for healing, help, or comfort. We pray especially this morning for those who have asked for our prayers, praying especially for Peter, Sammy, Verona, Agatha. We pray for Ashton, Lloyd, Ryan. We pray for Les, Wyatt, and we pray for those known only to yourself, and we pray especially for those whom we hold close in our own hearts. Gracious God, the comfort of all who sorrow, the strength of all who suffer, hear the cry of those in misery and need. In their afflictions, show them your mercy, and give us, we pray, the strength to serve them for the sake of him who suffered for us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I ask your prayers for the mission of the church. Pray for the coming of God's kingdom among all nations and peoples. 
O Lord our God, you have made all races and nations to be one family, and you sent your, sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to proclaim the good news of salvation to all people. Pour out your Spirit on the whole creation, and bring the nations of the world into your fellowship, and hasten the coming of your kingdom. We ask this through the same, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I ask your prayers for those who have died in the peace of Christ, and for those whose faith is known to God alone. Pray that God may be glorified in all his saints. O God, the giver of eternal life, we give you thanks and praise for the wonderful grace and virtue declared in all your saints. Grant to us and to all who have died in the hope of the resurrection a share in the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ and the fullness of joy in the fellowship of all your saints. All this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us give thanks to Almighty God for all his goodness. You are worthy, O Lord, our God, to receive glory and honor and power. You are worthy to receive blessing and praise now and forever. For yours is the majesty, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done, by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may walk in your love and walk in your ways. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And, also with you. and please share the peace with one another during COVID times. Just wave, <laughs> smile. Our offertory hymn is Rise Up.
Let us pray. O oh God, accept our praise and thanksgiving. Help us all, help us in all we do to offer ourselves as a true and living sacrifice through Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right that we should praise you, gracious God, for you created all things. You formed us in your own image. Male and female, you created us. When we turned away from you in sin, you did not cease to care for us, but opened a path of salvation for all people. You made a covenant with Israel, and through your servants Abraham and Sarah gave the promise of a blessing to all nations. Through Moses, you led your people from bondage into freedom. Through the prophets, you renewed your promise of salvation. Therefore, with them and with all your saints who have served you in every age, we give thanks and raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Yeah. 
creation rightly gives you praise. In the fullness of time, you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He healed the sick and ate and drank with outcasts and sinners. He opened the eyes of the blind and proclaimed the good news of your kingdom to the poor and to those in need. In all things, he fulfilled your gracious will. On the night he freely gave himself to death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Gracious God, his perfect sacrifice destroys the power of sin and death. By raising him to life, you give us life forevermore. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is God. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Recalling his death and proclaiming his resurrection and looking for his coming again in glory, we offer you, Father, this bread and this cup. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts that all who eat and drink at this table may be one body and one holy people a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And as our Savior taught us, let us sing. <laughs> the bread of life says the Lord whoever comes to me will never be hungry whoever believes in me will never thirst behold what you are become what you receive the gifts of God for the people of God
Let us pray. O oh God, as we are strengthened in these holy mysteries, may our lives be a continual offering, holy and acceptable in your sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in christ jesus forever and ever amen the lord bless you and keep you the lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you the lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit amen please be seated for announcements So there's uh, quite a bit of Camp Harding news. Uh, it's under construction. It's, uh, there, the, bishop, the new bishop has a vision for Camp Harding, which is good. And so they're putting in new windows and new mattresses and everything, getting ready for all the summer activities coming up. And they're wanting people with trailers willing to do some dump runs. We have already removed the old foam mattresses and wood but it needs to go to the dump. So if you are available in the week of July the 17th, I guess this coming week, uh, please contact Ann Hill. I think you know her. <laughs> There's a work fee on July 23rd and 24th. Families are invited to come out, have a weenie roast and clean, sweep, paint, and enjoy the nature in the park. Please let Ann know because they have to let Cypress Hills Park know approximately how many vehicles to expect. So I don't know, you, you might have like the, uh, from the TGIF, the, all the summer camp uh, programs. So the Francis and Friends Long Weekend Family Camp is in the September Long Weekend. It's a weekend of faith and family before everything goes school crazy. Families are invited to escape to the peace of Cypress, Cypress Hills one more time before school takes over. Sign up through the Coppell website. The cost per family is $250 for the weekend. And if you want to come for the entire week as a family, it's a cost of 
$500 per family for the week long, on August the 14th to the 20th. It's the week long Francis and Friends. And then there is a calling for uh, 12 to 16 year olds. So in this parish, uh, if anybody who's 12 and 16, there is a very interesting summer camp coming up. It's called Canterbury Fails Medieval Camp. And so there's a, there's a whole week of exploring the absurdities of medieval life and religious belief and the eternal truths and wisdom underlying some of the day-to-day -day activities of regular folks and the church through games, activities, and meals. And I know that the Maple Creek uh, parishioners, eight of them have volunteered to be pillagers. And uh, there, there's, there's gonna be some pillaging going on and kidnapping of the queen. So that's uh, August the 7th to the 13th. And I myself am leading a retreat on the last Thursday, I think the 25th to the 28th, which is a Sunday from Thursday to Sunday, I'm leading a, a spiritual retreat, the Holy Spirit and the Christian life. And um, I think the, 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 there's, it's gonna be something you probably know, but are gonna see see something totally different about the gospel and about how the Holy Spirit works in us and through us. So that's uh, uh, August 25th to the 28th. And I know that I'm supposed, I would have been here on August the 28th on, on that Sunday. So St. Stephen's is invited to Camp Harding because we're having a Eucharist out there at 10. So register, if you want to attend the retreat, register on the diocesan website or just show up at, uh, I think it's 10 o'clock. There, there's a schedule on the website. Uh, show up at 10 o'clock for the Eucharist. And I, we invited um, St. Mary's as well. So the weekly prayers, um, the next weekly prayer is on the 21st. So please join us and, and we can pray together. Thursdays, um, Tuesdays men's group, it's at the regular time and the regular place at 10 at the Tim Hortons on Sixth Avenue Northeast. And the women's coffee is at 145 on Thursdays and from now on until maybe at the end of the November 30th when I leave. For the steeple design ideas, if you have an idea about what it could look like, please submit to Michael. And of course, keeping a Reverend Chris in our prayers uh, for his tasks before him that the Lord will walk in, you know, bear his burden with him. I'm sure he wants the Lord to bear his burden for him, but I think the Lord will bear his burden with him. Um, on a sad, sadder note, um, on Thursday, um, when we had our coffee, Val was talking, telling me about uh, Sammy, and that night he died. And so uh, we keep him uh, in our prayers, uh, may he rest in peace and rise in glory and keep Val, and I think the other woman is Sharon, who's been her partner. Keep Val in our prayer. She has done, uh, she has walked with Sammy for, for uh, a long time. And so just keep her in, in our prayers as a parish and we can surround our love around her uh, and so strengthen her in these days uh, ahead. Our recessional hymn, if there are no, are there other uh, announcements? Okay, our recessional hymn is Yet Not I, But Through Christ in Me, is our recessional hymn. <clears throat> Oh, oh. 
go forth into the world, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.